Hi, it's me again. I'm working on a pattern from Simplicity and it's really a big challenge for me. I've never tried a beautiful blouse like this. It's got long sleeves and I guess this is the um, a pattern from the 80s or the 90s. It's kind of an old pattern. I got it at the thrift store, I think for $1.75. And um, it's an old pattern, but it has never been used. And I opened it up and it's all, it's perfect inside. Now I'm just cutting out the parts. And I've got several different fabrics that I'm gonna try that I have enough for using. This is a flannel plaid that I'm gonna start out with. I got this plaid at at the thrift store and so that's kind of going to be my tool for for this pattern to see how it works out because I didn't pay very much for that fabric and if I mess up I won't be so upset and I have some nicer fabric I'm going to try later on with it and um so it's a size 16 and I've lost weight recently and so I think I'll fit into that maybe with plenty of room. It says um, here that it will take at the most two and five eighths yard and I have plenty of yardage in this fabric. I'm gonna do view three right here. And um, it has the long sleeves and pleats, the one here, which I really attracted to. And that's gonna be quite a challenge. Um, I might change the collar treatment because it has a little dip right here. I might change it to this. I'm still kind of thinking about it. I like that a little better. So be kind of like a, a riding top, you know. I like the look. Both of them kind of look like riding, riding gear to me. Like formal, that white, white shirt, blouse. Looks like a riding top to me like a formal English riding top it's really beautiful and um, so I'm gonna give it a try and I know um, see my daughter is trained uh, English writing and I think if I can get good at this she'll want me to make her one and it's not that expensive as far as materials and everything it'd be a nice gift so yeah this is my my latest project i made a big mess in my bedroom this is how i cut it i have a big huge plastic mat and i put a sheet on my bedspread and i just have my scissors and get out my pins i will try to use as many clips as i possibly can and not get my pins out because i don't like to bring pins into the bedroom i normally i've been been um cutting out mostly handbags, but um, kind of gotten the urge to work on some clothes and because um, I wanted to update my wardrobe. And this is really um, in right now, this kind of a top. Um, you know, everything that from the past always comes back. So I'm really excited about this. And um, it will have kind of a prairie look to it Anyway, that's where I'm at. Oh, I also wanted to show you another pattern that's kind of similar to this pattern. In the, um, but it has uh, ruffles around the sleeves. And rather than pleats, they use ruffles, which I think is really pretty. Plus it has buttons going down the front. I like that. And now that I have a, a new Bernina sewing machine, Buttonholes are pretty easy. Now this has a buttonhole treatment around the neckline right there. So that should be a new challenge for me because I really haven't done a lot of buttonholes. And this is um, something I wanted to try to get good at. And uh, I think I'm going to keep this, this treatment here for the neckline. It's a pleated ruffle. And the uh, rough, those are pleats right there. So um, it's going to be kind of a new challenge. All of these are pleated. 
And so it's more of a controlled approach to the ease that um, are given in a ruffle. So, and here on, in the directions, I think the directions start over here. Over here, um, I guess that's cutting out everything. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're doing um, stay stitching around the collar. All of the pleats are are basted down, or stays top stitched down. Um, the the uh, sides are stitched together. And I think I will use um, my serger for a lot of this because I just like the way it finishes off things, makes things strong. I usually serge and then top stitch over the top to make it really strong, strong outfit. Um, this is kind of what it looks like as it's being put together. Oh, this is the collar that I'm working on with the stand up. Um, pleated collar. It has these two big pieces, which I've never done that before. That should be interesting. And they they fold over and then they're looks like they're basted. Yeah, it's slip stitch, pressed edge of collar over seam matching centers and small dots. Yeah. Yeah, so that should be interesting. It'll make kind of a real sturdy sort of a yoke. This is how it's all coming together here. See, those are not pleated, but um, they're... Using, um, yeah. They're pleated. They're not um, gathered. Different. Pleated, but not gathered. Yeah, this is sleeve treatment. Then they're adding the cuff. Add on to the armhole. Looks like they do. Yeah. And the hem. Yeah, should be nice. Should be rather nice. Uh, also, it says, to form pleats, pull threads, bringing solid line to broken line, press. Continue in this manner until all pleats are formed. Machine stitch five eighths from raw edge through all thicknesses, tear pattern away. So. Okay, wow. A ruffle neck and band. Prepare pleated ruffle for neck and band as follow. Fold ruffle in half lengthwise with right sides together trim seams. Turn ruffle press. Shortcut. Oh, that's a shortcut that's optional. For um, attractive pleating. Well, I have a pretty good ruler. I think I can do this. Plus, I'm working with plaids, which I think is going to be essential, really essentially a big help. This plaid is pretty even, and I don't think I really need to waste my neck ruffle. I'd like to keep it if I can, because I want to keep the 
pattern intact so I'll be able to use it again. So I will try to do it another way. I have a ruler with the everything marked. Plus I have this that I cut everything on and I can pretty accurately measure things with the aid of my ruler and that. Yeah, so this is the um, chalk line marker that I have. And it does a really nice job, as you can see. And then you can just wipe it out when you're done. You gotta be careful. Now I have a, a really good um, ruler that I can use and I have spray starch and iron that I'm gonna be um, spraying spraying down the, um, the pleats with once I get them all marked out. So, we'll see how this works out. I also have my sewing machine all threaded up with um, blue thread. Now my serger, I'm using black because I had some blue thread, but it was kind of a royal blue. It was too bright, it didn't look good. It was just, you know, jumping off the fabric too much. And I just thought, well, I think black is better than blue. And this is what it looks like on here. I did some test samples to make sure I had the tension right. I got it good right here. So I always do tense samples I run I run it to make sure that I have a good stitch on both my sewing machine and my serger before I start sewing okay so I have uh, drawn in the lines with my ruler and my um, chalk line I think they look pretty good um, now, according to the pattern, um, you have to stay stitch the collar. I haven't done that yet. But I also have to um, make tucks in front on the outside folds along solid line. Stitch three quarters to two centimeters from fold edge. Press tucks towards left side edge based along upper and lower edges. So I'm going to have to... Um, press, do a lot of press. This shirt is <laughs> mostly pressing. It's press, press, and more press. And so um, that's okay. That's the way it's going to be. All right. This is me getting ready to press, and I've just folded it over. This is the first pleat, and I'm going to be spraying it with um, heavy finish, and I've got my iron all heated up. So I'll just spray it with the spray and starch right here. And I want it to be pretty crisp because I think it's going to make it a lot easier. Oh, I probably should use a cloth. <laughs> Is it, I can see that the iron is wanting to stick. I'm just going to use another another scrap from the same fabric and use it as a pressing cloth. All right, so I have pressed and starched my pleats, and um, so there's a, a center fold right in between each each um, pleat. There's five pleats in all. And so there's a small seam allowance on, on this side of this pleat and on the inside of the pleat on the other side. And so um, that will create a band. And uh, we'll see how that looks. Okay, it says uh, stitch three quarters from the folded edge. And so I marked, um, a spot on my sewing machine as a seam guide um, with some tape and I'm going ahead and and putting a seam down on where those folded the folded edge was three quarter or several mark here which is pretty big actually you can see right there where 
I had marked it and I tried to erase it with my finger. Okay, I had said that it was a small seam allowance. Actually, it's not, it's like three quarters. And um, so when you do that, you create this. And as you, this is how it was pressed. It's pressed like an accordion. It's all piled up together. But when you're done with the three quarter seam allowance, then you have this, which makes sense because then you press it down and stitch the bottom and the top, and then you have a nice pleated edge right there. Looks beautiful, looks really beautiful, creates a texture. And I, that is very interesting. Okay, I've put a stay stitch seam right here in the bottom and on the top. So these, these uh, pleats are set, they're really nice. I'm impressed. Never done pleats before, but I uh, think I will try them again. Okay, so I think I've discovered that I've cut out two yokes and two backs, yokes, front and back, that in a total of four yokes all together. But that's okay, because I'm going to make this a very warm <laughs> top, and I think the, the double yoke is going to be kind of nice. So I just stay stitched them together and you're supposed to stay stitched the collar together anyway. And as I read further on in the pattern, I think that it'll be fine. This was for the two yokes were for a version that didn't have a, a ruffle on the collar, but this one does. Um, and it'll be, it'll be making it nice and warm and comfy. So I, it also, this, this pattern does not, um, include instructions for serging, but what I'm going to do is certain sur um, key seams that um, will take, uh, you know, weight bearing seams like the, um, the part between the yoke and the, and the bodice and the side seams and certain other seams, um, I will serge to make it a very strong garment and then I'll top stitch over the top of it as well. Okay, the bodice is stitched to the yoke now, and uh, I had to pull out a little bit in the front because it didn't, I had a gap when I first did it. So I am going to go ahead and serge this and then press. I'll put a locking stitch over the top. I forgot, sometimes they put a, like in certain seams like this, this is a kind of a tricky seam for me so I will lay down a basting stitch first and then serge and then I can make sure everything's matching up. It's the first time I've done this pattern. If I get accustomed to a pattern I know the intricacies of it I don't do that so much because it's easier for me but this one is brand new so you know I'm learning and th this you know, will ease into the other pattern. I'll be trimming off any excesses or anything. But so far, oh, I forgot to mention, um, in the length of this, this blouse, I lengthened it maybe two inches on the bottom because generally, um, most blouses, as they're designed, this is supposed to be hip length, um, covering the belly, um, that doesn't work for me usually because I'm six foot tall and I have a very long torso and so, and a, and a, you know, I do have a belly, so that has to cover that. So because I know how to adjust, I just adjust down here, lengthen it down here, and that can always be taken away if it doesn't look good. So I've never done this pattern before. I don't know if that will even be necessary. Like I said before, this is my toile for this pattern. I have better fabric later on. I'm gonna try it on once I get good at it. And um, maybe I'll even buy some real fancy fabric for it. 
you know, later on if I really like this pattern. So that's what I've done. I've lengthened the the um the the bow these to make sure that I've had have plenty of room. Oh, this is what it looks like on the other side. And I put two layers of fabric here, front and back, so. Okay, this is what it looks like after I pressed it. And um, I put down a, a, a cover stitch seam. There's the serge seam and the cover stitch seam right there. There's the original seam. So actually there's like three seams there holding that together. It's lock solid, it's solid. There's also going to be another part of the yoke that's gonna be coming down and stay stitching over the top. And I might do it by hand, um, like with a slip stitch, something similar to what you would do on a, on a hem, you know, just over the top of this so that I'm catching that like the right here so that um it's barely visible it won't be visible from the other side of the stitch but there'll be an it'll be uh, three layers of fabric here which will create quite a nice warm blouse for the winter it's flannel and uh three layers in the yoke plus long sleeves and, and a long bodies. Okay, so front and back bodies and yokes are attached. And so now what remains is to attach the top seam. There's only one seam to work on. The other seam has a buttonhole. So um, I will, um, work on this one side over here this is the side with the buttonhole because um the uh, back yoke is a little bit longer than on this side than on this side so that's how you know which is which and it shows that in the pattern over here see it right here the yoke is a little bit longer on one side Oh yeah, and I'm not going to be pressing this down flat, like a flat felled seam and, and stay stitching it down like the pattern says. Instead, I'm going to be surging it and then um, pressing it down and then the same way I did the other seams, just locking it all down. It'll be pretty tight. Um, but it's not going to be the way that the pattern says the seam. It's just a different type of seam that I'm working on. Okay, so I cut the interfacing and this is all the, I have plenty of interfacing, so that's not an issue. This is not iron-on interfacing. This is sewn-in interfacing and it's woven. And I think it, it'll work pretty good. It's pretty stiff for a, a garment. But I think I kind of think that's going to be nice. It's for the collar. And I'm imagining that the sleeves will need interfacing as well. Okay, so I'm working on this pattern. And I noticed that there is a one on the view that I <laughs> am working on. I'm not working on three, which has a little tie right there. I'm working on one. And... That is the color that I'm working on. It has pleats as opposed to ruffles. And it also has um, a little band right there. And I haven't cut out the interfacing for the band yet. I have two pieces for the front and back, but no interfacing. So I will do that and um, also work on the pleats for the uh, band. Pleats are going to be done pretty much the same way that I did the pleats in the front of the blouse here and, and here. And so um, it, I pretty much marked it on the fabric with a chalk. And um, you can use the pattern 
and just sew right through the pattern. Use that as your marking lines. They say that's a time saver, but it doesn't look very accurate to me. And also, I'd like to save my pattern. I don't want to destroy my pattern and have to rip it. So that's what you'd have to do is rip away your pattern. And I want to be able to use this this pattern again in fact if i like this pattern i'm going to reinforce all of the pieces with freezer paper that's usually what i do if i find a pattern that i really like or if i alter it a little bit i will alter it again on the free freezer paper and draw the lines that i prefer in the way i like it because i'm not made like her unfortunately she has a you know very nice tidy little body i'm not like that i'm tall and you know things even with this size it's a size 16 i don't think it's going to be long enough for my torso so i do have a dress form which i will, later on i will be putting the dress the the cut out piece I, i've put it on the dress form and um even at a size 16 there's no given this fabric this is just flannel like something you'd put in a nightgown there's no stretch so it's going to be fitting it's going to be you know a tailored shirt and so it's not loose like a t-shirt or something like that and so i think that um you know the fit is very important on this anyway i'm gonna continue i will show you my progress as I go. Oh, another thing, I discovered that I had this View 3 has a collar. And since I was following View 3, thinking, I, you know, my eyes are playing tricks on me. I guess I need to change out my glasses, my better glasses. But um, I cut out this pattern piece for this and this both and i only need one and so i forgot to cut the interface for this this collar here the bottom part of this collar right there so i'm going to use that fabric to cut out that that interface part from the same fabric i'm not going to use interface even though i have plenty of interface i don't want interface rubbing up against my skin i'd rather have this because i think it'll be more comfy and um it'll just feel nicer against my skin so yeah if i had been paying attention to which view i was sewing and you know used my camera could have seen that's the collar that i was cutting out too and in, in addition to that only needs one collar and um save myself a little bit of fabric but this is why you do a twill a twill is a practice run not using expensive fabric this fabric i bought at the thrift store like i said before and it's okay to waste a little bit of fabric and in a practice run this is what you learn Also, um, the uh, the pattern says to clip the edges of of um, the garment neckband so that it eases into the attached neckband, and um, that way there's no problem. It's up here where you clip. And I guess later on when it gets attached, we do it again because we're going to attach another layer. So there'll be, actually, looks like I need to do an interfacing on that collar. So I need to cut out another interfacing, attach it, attach it to the garment, then attach the ruffle, and then attach the cover interfacing here and then baste it down that makes sense
And my interfacing is a little bit wrinkly, so I'm going to take it over and press it and then attach it. Okay, these, this is with the interfacing attached. I just sewed on. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it on there and attach it. And um, this will not probably be seen. Um, the seams. Uh, and I tried to make sure that my thread is matched up cr pretty close. So if there is a thread line showing or something, it's not going to be that noticeable. This is what it looks like on the dress form, and it hasn't been joined yet, but this is my homemade dress form. My husband made, helped me to make it. So um, the seams, kind of hard to see because, um, you know, but it's nice. I, I think it's good. And these are the, the ruffles in the collar. I haven't joined the collar yet. There's no finish on that yet. But I um, just wanted you to get a general impression of what the shirt is going to look like so far. Okay, so now I've sewn down the other binding layer on the collar. There's actually two binding layers. One for the outside, one for the inside of the collar. And what happens is, if you turn it inside out, kind of like that, press it down, and it makes, you know, nice a nice look. And I'm also going to, um, once I'm, I'm going to serge the inside right here, and so that it doesn't fray, and it'll connect, this is already connected, but it'll make it a nice, nice edge to it and then I will um, slip stitch it down so it stays down because I like um, everything to be you know um, just a, a nice look to the yoke I want it to be nice and tight but I think it's it's going to be a nice warm collar it stands upright it's pretty stiff so it I think it's going to look good Okay, so there, that edge has been surged, kind of neaten up the edge a little bit. And uh, the inside seam, I don't really have to worry about because um, it's not gonna be visible. It would probably look better if I open it up and press it. I think I'm going to press it. And so this is the next step, I'll press it open and then press everything over like that. That's the same seam, really. Yeah, it wouldn't do it any good to press it open. So what the best thing to do is to take it, turn it over, press it. Yeah, be pointless to press it open because I'm going to turn it. Okay. Okay, so now um, on the internal lining of the um, the collar, bottom part of the collar, um, I I had um, surged it, and now I'm turning it under, and I'm gonna slit, slip stitch it so that um, it's going to be um, kind of it's like a hem stitch, putting it down onto the collar, sewing it down so that the uh, the interfacing doesn't show or doesn't start coming loose or anything. I'm going all the way one side to another. Okay, so this has been basted down and it looks nice. It's really solid. I'll give you a little glimpse of that. It's all basted. And um, so the next thing is um, the treat. That's for the different view. The the next thing is for the treatment of where the buttons or this version has snap. That one's button holes. I don't see any plackets here, and it wasn't in the pattern. 
and um i'm thinking i'm gonna add like what would be like considered a placket for um the buttons because um for one thing the neck is a little bit narrow and i don't want to lose any fabric in the neck area because when i try it on and i have about two inches to spare but that um, on each side might be taken up in the seam allowance. So I'm thinking that I'm just gonna sew on a placket and make sure I have a nice nice neck on there and shoulder area. I'd rather have it fit a little bit looser in the shoulder area than it's fitting right now. So what I'm going to do is just create a placket for the buttons and the buttonholes. And I've already cut them out. And I'm just going to sew them on right sides together on here. I'm going to um, serge the ends and turn them over. And then it will be, I'll be serging them together, putting at, adding them on here. And then there we go. We've got a an addition for the the buttonhole, and it won't take as much fabric. There, therefore, my neck won't be as narrow and tight fitting as this would be, which I don't think it would be very comfortable. This is a nice neck, and it's kind of. It, I just think it'd be a little bit too snug. Um, I think it's kind of meant to be like a turtleneck with a ruffle on top and which would be really pretty but as as the pattern is laying right now I think I want to add a little bit if I do this pattern again it doesn't work out I'll just fix it next time or this can be you know changed later on if I don't like it they can always get out the good old seam ripper go to work on it start over again which I have here there's a seam ripper and uh, that's where I don't those of you who aren't really familiar with sewing and are just kind of learning by watching um, yeah you just pick out each each stitch individually and I've had to do that a few times already in this garment and it's just part of sewing when I was joining this seam here together, I had joined it wrong and I had to about five or six inches. It was kind of like created an odd little tuck right there, which did not look good. And so I had to unpick five or six inches and join it together again properly and then sew it. And it worked, it worked fine, but so that's just part of making garments and part of sewing you know a lot of times you don't do it perfectly but you always if this kind of fabric um luckily is very forgiving now if it was like a really delicate silk or something like that which would be really nice with this pattern not so much you can't just unpick really you know fine silks or you know slippery satins things like that with without doing some damage to the fabric oh yes here's one more thing um that i always do when i'm sewing by hand is i always wax my thread this is a little bit it's kind of nasty looking but it's a got all kinds of threads stuck to it but this is a little bit of uh, beeswax that my dad gave me from his bees. And um, I've got various sewing boxes around the house. I always keep a little bit of beeswax in there. And see the little notches? That's where I run my thread through. I just take my thread and I hold it with my fingers and run it through the the knot or or as part of the beeswax and get do it like five or six times to get a coating of beeswax on the thread and what it does is it makes makes the thread a little bit more manageable doesn't get as tangled you could still get it tangled you still got to manage it but it um it makes it easier to handle 
Now, um, I've tried to um, use it with, I have this little um, reel thing that I put my needles in when I'm doing a lot of hand sewing, like for my quilt, for example. And you don't want to um, wax it before you put it in the reel. I'll show it to you sometime. Um, the wax, for some reason, does not allow the thread to run through the, the uh, reel very easily. It's kind of like a fishing reel and it, it like makes it stick. So I always wax it when I take the needle and thread out of there. It holds like 10 needles with thread so that, you know, I can just thread them all up at once and sit there and sew while I'm watching TV or whatever and not have to keep sewing, threading the needle, sewing, threading, because threading the needle the older you get, the harder it gets, and that's a tiny little hole, and sometimes you can get needles with bigger holes, but sometimes you don't want that. You just want a small little needle because it's going to not damage the fabric as much, and it, different needles for different purposes. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to show you how I marked um, the buttonholes and I use this tool it's a measuring tool you can find these in most sewing supply stores Joann's La Hobby Lobby you know they're online you um, they're they're fairly self-explanatory this little um, gauge right here moves up and down and it shows exactly how far you're going to measure it kind of keeps you stable so the you can do this and, and uh, therefore got a nice even buttonhole. This is my chalk marker. I think I said something about that already. And these are the buttons I chose, which are not a real expensive button. They're, they're not um, like real pewter or anything. They're kind of a look-alike, but I think they're made out of metal maybe some kind of nickel or something like that they're but they're nice and uh, they kind of look a little bit victorian so that's what uh, the look i'm kind of going for it's a victorian color and uh, kind of a beautiful button to go along with it okay so now i've got all the i'm sewn on and i'm going to mark the buttonholes which i haven't done yet i've put the outfitted my sewing machine for a buttonholer and um i'm not gonna go through that um because your machine might be different than my machine i have a um a Bernetta b79 and um it's a great little machine if you're looking for a machine especially if you're a dressmaker or a quilter, you know, do it does embroidery. It's a really good little machine. It takes a little while to learn it, but I highly recommend it. Okay, I have marked where I want my um, my buttonholes, and um, based on my measurements of the buttonholes, I marked like a full. That looks like an inch to me. Not sure if that's an actual inch. But um, that buttonhole is like a half inch. Maybe a little bit more than a half inch. Then I marked here. It's kind of a rough line with the uh, chalk line. But I think it's kind of okay. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to glare at you. I'm just doing my best to make it as even as possible. I did a couple of practice buttonholes. This is how my machine does buttonholes. Let me show you. It's pretty cool. This is the spot where I want the buttonhole. The hard part is 
lining up the needle where you think the buttonhole is supposed to go and getting it all aligned properly. Not always easy. But I'm assuming that one's correct. Then I just step on the There's a button in there. That's how you get the correct size. That's pretty easy. Okay, I put the pleats in the sleeves and I drew the lines on the fabric in the way that it was on, on the instructions and on the pattern. And um, next, I'm, I haven't um, side done the side seams and I'm not gonna use this seam I'm gonna use this this plus a serger over the top so that it will be very strong and uh, follow, I followed all of these instructions then I'm gonna side seam the sleeves and um, I've also stay stitched the top of the pleats already like this like so then um I don't have interfacing on the cuffs because it didn't work too well. Um, this, these cuffs require buttons and my sewing machine didn't do too well when I had two layers of, so many layers of interfacing. I might go one layer of interfacing. I guess that's what it is. It's both sides of the uh, cuff have fabric plus one layer of interfacing, that would be three layers all together. Well, I'll try if I can. Um, the buttons on the blouse, um, the buttonholes, they turned out, you know, I'm not thrilled with them. I'm going to go back over them. I, they're, they're in here and they're on the other side. This is the wrong side. I'm gonna go back over them. Um, my sewing machine did not power through all the layers, especially up here by the top ruffle, I have this big hump to power through. And that one, I had to seam rip out several times. See how I did that? That was not a good idea for buttonholes. So what I, you know, you have to get, consider this power and the strength of your machine and you know if i had an industrial buttonhole machine that would have powered right through that but didn't and so what i'm gonna do is I use what i came up with i'll show you later and probably you know embroider a buttonhole over it just to make them all look really nice and i will have more buttonholes on the on each sleeve yeah i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and uh, because you know i don't want to don't want to skip out on any part of this i think it's such a beautiful design that i don't want to change the design okay now i have gone ahead and searched the sleeve seams and rather than doing them that way i searched them that's what they look like i think they're looking pretty good they already have the pleats in and the side seams <clears throat> over here are surged. And they also have a lock. All of them have a lock single stitch in them. Now, also, I have gone ahead and sewn the uh, one, um, the interfacing to one side of the one of the cuff, both of the cuffs. And according to the, um, the pattern, um, after you sew it on, 
then you trim it off the, the, the seam. And I think that is so that when you put in buttons, there won't be this huge bump like there was in the other. And I noticed that it was a real problem when you're doing buttonholes. So after, after trimming them off, then you seam right here on the opposite side where the notches are, we seam around here. And then we turn it in inside out. Okay. right sides together and then um, press them yeah and then um, you pin the sleeves to cut matching small and large dots like so and leaving an opening right there because that's where the buttons are going to be. Like that. Okay, these are the notches. I'm assuming that's going to make it nicer when they when I turn them inside out. We'll see. And that doesn't it didn't really say they had to be anywhere in particular just like that okay I've turned the cuffs inside out I haven't pressed quite yet and I'm gonna go ahead and press them I'll show you what they look after I press them but um like they are not looking like perfectly symmetrical this here this might look a little different once I press it but I don't think it's really gonna matter it's going to be on a cuff. It's, there's going to be buttonholes there. So you won't see that little problem where it's not like a perfect rectangle there. That's how close, you know, look. I mean, once it get on your body, that isn't going to be a huge factor. Now it's important to try to get, you know, things as neat as possible. So... I'm going to try to do that, but, you know, I'm not going to stress. Okay, now I press them. I also, when I press while I'm sewing, a lot of times, and this time is true, I use pretty heavy spray starch, and I think it kind of helps to um, keep the fabric, you know, make order more orderly and kind of gives it a little more body especially a fab, you know, if you're going a little bit lighter, like um, with a more viscous, silky type of a fabric, spray starch will be very helpful. So um, this is, you know, pretty heavy fabric and it's, it's just, you know, kind of like a, a nightgown flannel or something like that. And, and, um, but I, I like it. I mean, I think it's going to be really pleasant shirt to wear and I've always liked flannel shirts it's just they're kind of ugly usually this one's going to be a pretty one so I'm rather excited about it but um this is the cuff these are cuffs and they're right now because I've starched them they're rather got a lot of body now I just have to attach them to the inside of the sleeve Okay, so I've tried to make this as even as possible. This is going to have a generous seam allowance. And at this part, I'm going to turn this over. Probably put a, um, a bit of gathering over here. That's the cuff. But I'm um, going to probably create some gathering so that you noticed um, according to the pattern, both sides are out equal and um i think it might have had something to do with the way the the uh, pleats were done i don't try to follow the pleats exactly but it looks to me like underneath where this one doesn't seem to have are those buttons on the exterior or the interior oh they're exterior buttons 
The pleats were on the interior though. Is that proper? Doing pleats on the exterior? I think it is. Okay, so this is the problem. This is the sleeve, the way it's cut. This is the cuff. Now, for the most shirts, they put the buttons on the outside. This has gathers on the inside of the sleeve. That's the way the sleeve is designed. Right there, I see some gathers. There's gathers, there's pleats on the outside, gathers on the inside. That's what creates that kind of a poof of a sleeve. There are buttons on the outside. So I'm going to have to take some time and create gathers so that this comes down to this a little bit closer. Look at that. Yeah, it's going to need some gathers. Otherwise, it's not going to look good. This is the outside. This side is the outside. This is the inside. There's a seam on the inside. It's just not going to look right unless I create some gathers right there. And it's just, I don't see it in the pattern. I see it there. There's some gathers. Weird. Do they say anything about it? Not, not that I can see. Let's see. That might help. Stitch underarm seam, east stitch upper edge between notches. Gather lower edge between notches. <laughs> okay. Duh. There we go. I do not like gathering on the machine. I'd prefer to do it with a needle and thread. So here I am with the needle and thread again. But, you know, I think it, it always looks better with, with the needle and thread. So... Okay, Derek. Bye. Bye. Okay, this is starting to look better. <laughs> More in line with what we're, lo we're looking at. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm going to give myself a little bit of space right there at the top so I can turn that under and button the cuff right there, just like the pattern shows, using the pretty buttons that I have. I've got plenty of buttons. Oh, <laughs> I always use, a, I like some kind of a thimble. I've got different thimbles. I've got latex, you know, the rubbery kind of thimbles which I really like but this is the one I could find right now and uh, I when I'm sewing with this a sew needle and thread I like using a thimble okay yeah so I've pinned the cuff um, right sides together on the inside of, I put them on the inside so that I could control the gathers on the sleeve. Now I'm going to baste them down with the sewing machine. And I've left a little gap right there and I'm going to have a nice little seam allowance so that I can turn part of the sleeve like it's done in the pattern over here. You can turn part of the sleeve right there and create a little seam allowance right there. I think I'm not going to do where you um, only sew one side of the cuff together to that. That looks a little complicated because <laughs> they sew the inside and then they basted the outside. I think I'm just going to baste it all together and then serge it and then Turn this on the to the inside and baste it. See how it looks. And here is just a little note. This is why we have a free arm sewing machine. 
so we yes, can put it on cuffs on blouses what is good toward and God, right? you need do to hems on pants and things like that who, that God. won't give but yet they'll fit right there isn't that nice okay i put the uh, cuff back inside checked to make sure that you know the uh, seam was laying perfectly in place now the reason you want to check is when if you've never searched before those of you who know about searching um is when a searcher is working it cuts the fabric as it as as you sew so if you start someone searching on a sleeve and um you haven't really checked to make sure it's you know basted it on to make sure it's in place the way it's supposed to be then you've got a real mess because you've cut fabric and then you have to figure out how to fix that and that means probably size it down a couple of sizes which i don't want to do I want to save all the fabric i can so in order to do that you have to baste baste stitch means i'm using a single stitch so i'm not going to baste with a needle and thread hopefully i had to with the um when I was doing the gathering, I try to avoid that as much as possible. So, um, basting on before I use the serger to save myself the possibility of having to size down on the seams, making this the sleeve shorter than they would be. See, that would create a sleeve that was like up to here. And that would totally change the look of the sleeve. I am now, that'd be okay if it was like that sleeve or something. But I want this nice long sleeve here. So I hope I'm not boring you, but it's very important to keep in mind. I have learned this the hard way. Um, Basting is a really good idea because it's really easy at this point. If I were to mess up and not catch all of the all of the seams and so, say there would be a little hole right there. At this point, it would be really easy to correct that. All I would have to do is to get out my seam ripper. This is my seam ripper and pull out all these stitches one by one and then go back and sew them correctly that would be easy but if i'm using the serger i've lost fabric so that's kind of in effect as if i tail i'm like um making the garment smaller and smaller in size so it's going to have once i use the serger over the top of it it's going to have a much neater seam allowance because that's what it looks like i've showed you before and i'm not sure you really understood but as i'm serging it it's cutting creating a seam right here and at some point i think that would be a good video showing you how to set up a, if you are interested in me setting you up my serger and showing you how it works and everything and how I do different seams. I'll set I'll do that if you if I find people are interested in that. Or if you're interested in my in my Bernina and the different things it does. I could do that too, but there are already a lot of videos out there on it. And you know I've just kind of gotten interested in doing things where that people haven't already been done. It's, not, it's been done before y'all, you have to do a search for it. You can find how to use a serger, how to do a seam, but these are just um, basic um, sewing techniques that I've learned. And I was fortunate, I took home economics as a kid and my grandmother taught me and my mother taught me and i learned by trial and error i got books and i got patterns and fabric and sewing machines and i messed up a lot and i put my kids in some pretty crazy outfits and myself in some pretty <laughs> crazy outfits i could show you some pictures that will make you laugh but um you know sometimes you just have to try things out and it's fun that way to learn so I'll show you the next step once I've completed it. 
Okay, as far as serging, <laughs> these ends of these sleeves, I would give a D minus, but they're adequate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over over the top of them with a, a more stable stitch, hold them all together and turn them over, turn, you know, turn them over and press them and I think they'll be fine. They're all, it's all gonna hold together. It's gonna be strong. There's a couple of stitches on my sewing machine that I could use that will probably be a really good um, way to stabilize them. Some of these maybe, that one, number 10, number 13 would be good depending on what number 14 looks like. Any one of those. And this machine, that's one thing it really shines at is these different specialty stitches. Okay, I've done the buttonholes on the sleeves. I haven't sewed on the um, buttons yet, but I also um, worked on the inside cuff and I haven't trimmed all the threads yet, but I had to um, gather as much as I could. And I think when this is buttoned, it's not gonna be so visible, but I don't know, there must be a nicer way to do this sleeve. And I guess I'm gonna learn it because I'm gonna try this again. Anyway, those buttonholes are not very pretty, but there are buttonholes. And you, I don't think they're gonna be that visible. No, those buttonholes aren't that bad. My sewing machine was really giving me a lot of trouble. And I think once I'm finished with this project, I'm gonna have to take it in and get it serviced and complain about the buttonholes because it's not that old of a machine. And um, this is my buttonhole attachment. I did discover that I hadn't tightened this. It doesn't feel tight again. Maybe that's what's going on. This was loosened up because of the way I released the foot before I was trying to get it to come down. It doesn't pop out of there like the video show the way I was expecting it to. And I just was trying to do quite a number of things. See, it's all kind of loose, a little bit wonky. Doesn't really meet up to my expectations. I don't know why, but I think I'm gonna have to take it in and talk this, show this to the shop. Now I might have to take it in and look, maybe that part is something wrong there. But it has the button in it. It does create a buttonhole, um, but sometimes also the computer screen, like it will add on a little thing over, over here, like a little nodule right there. And that, I'm not sure why it's doing that. It isn't in the picture. Um, and like, I'll be, I, I had to go back and forth, do quite a lot of samples just to get the cuffs. These are for the cuffs. Now I did this same thing for the, the shoulder, but I chose a different button hole because, um, for the cuffs, because the other one wasn't working out. And I'm thinking, wow, maybe it was that one. Well, no, it wasn't. And I thought maybe I had too many layers of fabric. Turned out, no, it wasn't that either. So it's just um, when I'm doing two layers of fabric, everything's fine. Once I have interfacing or a couple of other things going on, it just doesn't work. And unfortunately, if you're making a jacket with buttons and buttonholes, you're going to get things like this. I'm going to have to go in and do that by hand now over the top of that. Oh, that's a little bit too ratty for me. I don't like it. I'm gonna have to go in and redo those buttonholes. I'll do it by hand. I can, I can always do it by hand. But I was really disappointed because I have this brand new Bernina. 
or Bernetta B79. It's an embroidery machine. The least you could do is a buttonhole. I'm pissed. So, anyway, I'm going to take it back to the shop where I got it once I'm done with this and see what the deal is. Okay, so I got the buttonholes on and um, the buttons and um, the top part here. It's gathered. I had to put some extra gathers in there to kind of cause it to close. Now, if you notice, there's some pink marking here. That's chalk. That will come off. And um, some of the buttons holes, I did have some problems. I went over them with some several time I don't think that's going to be so noticeable it's pretty <laughs> chewed up buttonhole because I went over it several times in my machine Ugh. but I got them done and I'm going to finish this shirt okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got the Vodis part completed along with the collar that's done and the buttons on the top collar um, for the closure. And now the next step is to attach the sleeves, which um, I need to turn turn the uh, shirt inside out and the sleeves sewing everything right sides together. And I'll show you what that looks like when I get that before I actually sew it. Okay, so I've got this all pinned together and I'm just showing it to you. And I'm going to baste it down right here. And um, I left with the pins in, I'm going to baste it. I will probably um, check on, you know, turn it right side out again. So I can check to make sure I've matched up every seam after I basted it. And then um, if everything's good, then I'll, I will go over it with a, um, the serge seam just to make it nice and tight and probably lock stitch it in with a straight seam as well because I, I want this shirt to be very strong and last for a long time and uh, you know I'm just going to um, do everything in my power to make sure that all the seams are tight. Okay, um, I have attached the sleeves and searched them down, both sides. And, you know, it's not a perfectly serge seam, but I do believe that it looks better than if I left it a raw seam. It trims down the fabric and it kind of eliminates a lot of bulk. I like that, I think also creates a much stronger garment um, in the end, I think. Any of you have ever taken the time to notice the clothes that you have that last a lot longer, this is a really good way to go. And uh, that's kind of my goal. I don't, I have um, a few um, pieces in my wardrobe that I've noticed they last longer. and. I look at the brands and I look at how they put them together and I'm trying to emulate that. Now this is an inside out. I'll show you the other way. I'm probably gonna have to iron this, kind of flatten out this seam here so it looks a little prettier. But um, one of the, a couple of the brands that I've noticed that seem to just last forever, um, especially with the big girl sizes, Lane Bryant X, excellent brand i had um a couple of pieces that i bought from them that were not that expensive and um in the past and it was kind of like a long sleeve tunic style um shirt with the knit fabric really plain like military green and that thing lasted <laughs> probably 10 or 12 years and it, it, the the spots always washed out of it you know how you always get spots on t-shirts you know down the front if you're a cook 
you know, you're cooking something, hamburgers or something, grease flies up and ruins everything. And, you know, um, it's one of the reasons I'm making a lot of aprons now. Also, I had some really nice stirrup pants um, that were stretched and those things lasted forever. I had uh, leggings. Um, and re most recently, that some of the things I have from them, um, I have stopped buying things brand new. Um, Lane Brand Bryant is really nice, but who can afford it brand new? I mean, a new top would cost sixty, seventy dollars, and I'd rather make my own now. But when I do shop thrift stores and that sort of thing. And um, so when I do, I always look for Lane Bryant or Torrid or some of the, um, there's one brand, I don't know where it comes from. It's called The Woman Within. So they have a lot of larger women sizes. And I'm noticing their construction. I turn them inside out. I look them over and see how they're put together whenever I buy anything. And you know, this is what they do. And also handbags, I look at those suitcases, anything that is sewn or constructed, manufactured in any way, I'm always interested in. Even buildings and and uh, houses and things like that, I'm always interested in what they're doing, how they put, do that, you know, how they lay carpet, put up wallpaper. It's like something that is a fascination. and. I think I'm not the only one. Uh, my kids do the same thing. I know my son, Eddie, my youngest son, Eddie, was doing that. We were looking. We were in an art museum or some kind of building. I, and he's looking at the construction of the architecture and saying to himself, wow, that's cool. And, you know, that, that made it interesting for me because I like doing the very same thing. Okay, I'm I'm pretty pleased. I've turned it inside out. I don't think I'm going to iron this right now in this seam. Don't think it's necessary. Looks pretty nice. Now I think um with the plaids, you know, matching up plaids this um, was something that you, you um, just follow the grain line of the pattern, the way of the pattern is the arrows are pointing. And that's what I did with this. I did the same thing with the yoke of this. The only thing I'm not really thrilled about is this rib right here going like that. I'm wish I'd done that a little better, but I don't think it's that distracting. This maybe could have done been done a little bit straighter, but I like it. I think it'll be okay. It'll be kind of, kind of cool. I don't think, you know, garments don't have to be perfect. A lot of times you can be more critical than, than most people are when they're just looking. So. Um, I still have one more thing to do, and that is put a hem on this. Still a raw edge down here. And I tried it on, and it's about as long exactly as I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is try to do the same thing I did in some areas. Rather than put a real hem on it, I'm going to add a piece of fabric about that long turn it over and then hem stitch it down on the other side so that there'll be a seam right here i'll be sewing its right sides together there'll be a seam right there on the edge and hem stitched up and for the reason that I don't really want to just turn it over I don't know. Might be okay. If I, uh, I don't know. I might give it a little thought. I might try it on one more time. See where, how much 
space I've really got. Because a nice narrow hem looks really good. It also works good if you're trying to tuck something into pants. And if you add more fabric in this area, when you, if you're going to use this as a tuck-in or anything like that, you might create like an odd little bubble right there. Which I'm not sure I want to do. I just want a very narrow hem. Just surge it, turn it under. But I, uh, I think I'll try it on, make sure that I've got the fabric for that. Okay, so I tried on the shirt and, you know, it's just right on that line where it could go. It could be a little short, but since, you know, I'm on uh, the slim side of what I normally am, I am going to err on the side of safety because I don't want to waste my time and sew a shirt that's going to be way too short. And um, just, uh, you know, I'm going, what I'm going to do is is uh, hem it exactly at the point I have by um, I cut out a long stri strip of the same fabric and I starched it and turned it on one side and now I'm gonna sew it right sides together and then I'm gonna turn it and and slip stitch it down on the other side as if it was hemmed and th there will be no raw edges um, because this edge will be um, face down towards the fabric so um it's just a way to save a little fabric and um you know it's probably just a fraction of an inch sometimes that can be a big deal in the way a blouse looks and uh, next time when i make this pattern i will make sure i add plenty of inches if you remember when i was cutting out this fabric and i mentioned it i did already add quite a few but since I do have a very long torso, um, <clears throat> wasn't enough. So I'll just have to take note of that. And this, you know, was considered a toile, which is um, sample fabric to, or some, you know, something inexpensive you could try out and then later on try out the more expensive fabrics. So this is what I wanted to find out when I, when I learned, you know, Start it out. Okay, so this is my dress form that I made. My husband helped me with it. It's a uh, duct tape. I duct tape myself into a t-shirt and, and cut it off and this is an office chair down here. So, and I, I use PVC pipe and coat hangers and an old blanket. And in, okay, so this, the chart, this shirt is finished and this is what the hem looks like. And I'm pleased. And now all I have to do is wash it, take off all these chalk lines and uh, press it. I think this is one of those shirts that will probably need to be pressed. But I don't think it will be too bad. Because it's all, the pleats are all sewn down. They're not loose. So it won't be, you know, too difficult. I'm going to try to take it out of the dryer as quickly as possible and shake it out. And uh, I think this is going to be a really great, great blouse. I, pr of course, I pre-washed everything now there's a little something that i hadn't noticed i think it's just a little issue when i joined those two pieces i don't think that's too noticeable the back pretty nice it's a uh, I think it's a very flattering shirt. I will show you what it looks like on when I get my husband to go ahead and film it for me. 
I just wanted to give you a little update about me. Um, my name is Elizabeth Husband. and I've done a few videos on sewing. In the past, I've done handbags and um, had making some handbags. And I've done some local events here in Washington State. Um, unfortunately, COVID has hit pretty hard here in Washington. And guess what? I got COVID. Yeah, and I got it bad. I got, I was hit hard. I was in the hospital on a ventilator. Um, my family was notified that I might not survive. And I wasn't sure I was gonna survive. But my whole church, everyone I know was praying for me. And um, I was praying for me and God got me through it. And. Um, was pretty miraculous. The doctors were were pretty amazed, actually, that I, I did make it because um, people that um, get on ventilators with COVID at my age, I'm 60, don't fare very well normally. And so, yeah, I, I um, it was hard. It was really hard. I felt like when I first got out of the hospital that I had a 300 pound weight on me. Could not do anything. Just picking up my cell phone felt like it was 20 pounds. And um, so I pretty much, I've been recuperating and I'm starting to feel a lot better now. I can do a lot more, but I do get wore, worn out pretty fast. But I do, I am taking my time with this video. Um, I'm working on on a blouse and just things for my wardrobe for the fall and the winter that will be warm and cozy and useful. And I'm hoping that you will find this video useful. Um, that's, you know, I, one thing I love about um, sewing and the art of sewing is it's so utilitarian. You can use what you sew or you can give it as a gift to somebody who really appreciate it. It's sad when Somebody gets, you give it to somebody and they don't appreciate it. So, you know, check it out before you give somebody something. I've done that before. I've given some people things and then found out later, oh, they didn't really like it. And it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. But, you know, we have to toughen up in this day and age because not everybody's going to appreciate everything about us. And so, and that's what I'm finding out is... Even at my age, I'm learning stuff and learning that, you know, I just gotta stay humble, especially with my health. And um, so I'm gonna take my time. This might, you know, it might look like it was only a half hour's worth of video, but I assure you, <laughs> it took a long time to get this video done. And, you know, it's, it's a real, it's just a labor of love to make these videos. And mainly because, you know, I'm hoping to build a community of people that are like-minded, that like to create things and want to share and, and learn from each other. And that's all I have. Thank you.